the fate of whether Hong Kong can remain as the hub of civil aviation in Asia in the next two decades is under the spotlight. At a public consultation forum organized by the airport authority on June 11, the AA is doing its best to woo the public nine days after the 20-year blueprint is released. This is a huge project and it takes time to complete. If we are going to expand, we have to add now and be quick. Canton has three runways already and we have five runways ultimately. Shenzhen has two at the moment and the third one is on its way. PK has three already, Seoul has three already and we have two more by 2020. And Bangkok has two already and we have the third one by 2016. If Chalap Kok remains at its tears today, Hong Kong would be outpaced by our rivals. Chalap Kok is reaching its maximum capacity soon. That means we can't bring more tourists to Hong Kong. If we don't expand, Hong Kong's tourism industry will suffer at the end. So I've got a few pictures for you to show you how the airport's operating today. So we're looking from the west, from the Macau side, down on the airport, and in the distance there you can see the high ground in the new territories and Lantau on the right hand side. The first runway at the airport is the normal departure runway. And we can see how aircraft depart. They climb straight ahead along the valley and then they turn right over the city. Because there is only one departure route out of Hong Kong, the standard separation we need to apply between aircraft to keep them safe is between 90 and 120 seconds. If I compare an airport like Heathrow or a lot of other airports, you will find there are departure routes immediately from the end of the runway that go in several different directions. That allows much more flexibility for departure and the standard departure separation in this case is 60 seconds. So it shows that because of the mountains and the limited departure route, uh, the departure capacity of the airport is limited to 35 departures per hour on that runway. If we look at the other side, which is uh, arriving aircraft, we have to take into account what's called weight turbulence and the mixture of heavy, uh, wide-bodied and narrow-bodied aircraft is very significant. In Hong Kong you have about 70% wide-bodies and 30% narrow-bodies. At Heathrow we have virtually the reverse. We have around 30% wide-bodies and 70% narrow-bodies. Now the standard separation for safety is 4 miles between wide-bodies, as you see at the top there, in the middle, you see a narrow body following a wide body, which requires five miles separation, and at the bottom, two narrow bodies, which have three miles, sometimes even two and a half miles separation. Because Hong Kong has such a high proportion of wide bodies, the majority of the time, you have to apply four or five miles separation, whereas at Heathrow, a lot of the time, we can provide three miles separation. So therefore, the mixture of wide bodies and head and narrow bodies has a very significant effect on the capacity and limits the capacity on the arriving runway to 33 arrivals per hour. When we look at options like the 2030 master plan recommended option, which is 15, 25 or greater, then it's a different story. Because in this case, we can have three runways operating independently in their normal mode of operations, and that gives us a capacity of 102 movements per hour. Having mentioned it, I'll give you a quick look at the primary mode or the normal mode of operations for a three runway airport. And starting from the first runway at the bottom, you can see that's in mixed mode with some arrivals and departures. The middle runway is departures. If you have three runways, the middle runway is always good for departures and arrivals on the third runway. You have to have a plan like that because you need to have roughly equal numbers of arrivals and departures uh, to make the airport if it work efficiently. So when we look at the capacity of the three runways, you'll see from the table there, the first runway in mixed mode, the second in departures, and the third in arrivals gives us a total capacity of 102 movements per hour. The Chinese white dolphin has a distribution throughout the Crown River Delta and are sighted in Hong Kong waters in varying numbers throughout the year. Studies into the Chinese white dolphin populations have been undertaken by government and many researchers with data published by AFCD on their website, which shows that the dolphin populations are less frequently sighted in the waters to the north and northeast of the airport compared to the west of the airport. 
but doubts remain. I live in Ma Wan and have been suffering aircraft noise for 13 years since Chalapcock Airport opened in 1998. If the third runway is to be built, I have no choice but to stand up and fight. The uh, traffic demands numbers that we see, and if I compare them with the growth of our population, our population is stagnant, but I see a sharp rise in, in the demand for the airport. So where does the demand come from? We believe that our airport actually serves a dual purpose. The first, it serves our transport needs. That relates to our population, how much traveling our own population want to do every year. Okay? But more important, airport serves as a hub, as an economic engine for Hong Kong. Uh, to my perception, AA has already made up its mind because AA's will is too emphasizing on the third runway. Which option the airport should expand in the future is not just a decision for today, a decision to impact for many, many generations. I think it's important that Hong Kong residents, Hong Kong citizens, have the opportunity to provide the airport authority with their views and their inputs before a decision is made. Unveiled in October 1989 by Governor Lord David Wilson, Chalapcock Airport was once the core component of Project Rose Garden, aiming to rebuild Hong Kong people's confidence in the aftermath of 1989 Tiananmen crackdown in Peking. The latest blueprint may have sparked the reminiscence about the diplomatic battle between Britain and China 20 years ago over the funding of the airport project, but the battle this time may still be a hot potato. On the one hand, the the AA needs to rule the public that the third runway is worth for money. On the other hand, it's a battle about conservation. Whichever plan is adopted, this battle is certainly not an easy one. The battle continues. Eric Lowe, INT, Wan Chai.